Hey everybody, it's Becky here with video um, 18. Wowzers, we are cruising along in April. So second week of April here, and I am coming back to you with um, the kind of the second half of the goal with the cartoon unit voiceover from Mia Yanu, who again is my student teacher who is awesome and has given me permission to share that with you. So I'm gonna go through um, those uh, ideas um, and that just, we're just keeping it really real today. That's the cat. His name is Patterson and he's very vocal. Um, I think he's been in a couple videos now. Okay, before I get into the voiceover stuff, I wanted to tell you about a game that um, I just created on the spot today in class. I just felt like the kids were all sitting and so I just was like, hey, let's try this and it worked great. So an online possibility for you to do is um, what I'm gonna call the arrow pointing game, I guess. Uh, this would be for a synchronous, so a live class, and you would want to have them in grid view. So Google Meets has grid view and Zoom has grid view, and I'm not sure about Schoology and how um, that platform or interface works with the grid view, but the others do. And what you do is you have all your students sitting there and you say, okay, on the count of three, you need to point. And so you're gonna either point this way or up or down or, you know, that way, but point to a direction that's going to point to a person and um, everybody's grid views are different. All right. So, and that's really important for you to know that. So you say, you're going to point and I'm going to look at where everybody is pointing and that person that's pointing at, I'm going to tell them who they are and then they have to make a funny face. And then I made them stand up and make a funny pose. Um, and it was hysterical. Oh my gosh. It was so simple. They all pointed. And um, I got to tell you, I really did try to sort of use their arrows, but it, you just pick who you want. But it was really funny to see them all like on the screen pointing different ways and they were cracking up. And then when I was like, okay, that's this person. I mean, I tried to honor it, but it's really hard to figure that out. Um, but it was super funny. And uh, you could easily switch that into another person and say, okay, once you go, then you, the next person, um, you know, if we picked Joe Bob, then Joe Bob gets to pick, he gets to do it. And so on, whatever shows up on his grid view, he has to make them so much fun. The kids were cracking up. There was like this suspense over who's going to get picked and you just need a little bit of that. And it, would, it was just really fun. So highly recommend that. Okay. So cartoon voice uh, over unit. I'm just going to kind of throw the next several um, ideas that Mia and I have brainstormed. Again, it's all her. She's so awesome. But I'm going to throw them kind of to you and then give you some thoughts on that. So um, they would have at this point completed the last tasks, which were to rework their comic strip voiceovers. So you would have them back. So the next lesson beyond the last video um, is to pull them back for a synchronous class. And in that synchronous class, divide them into um, groups. Uh, you could work them in pairs. You could um, kind of do this however you want, all right? So if you want to have individuals work, I guess you could, if you, Pete, you wanted to let them volunteer, if you want to put, we thought pairs would be the best. You um, would then have them share with that, that partner their, each of their stories from their comics and then have that little duo decide which group or which, which story they want to pick. And they would each voice a voice because all of the comics have two characters. They would each voice a voice from that. So they'd be working on that, practicing with their partner, which is great in uh, breakout rooms on Zoom. They would each be practicing um, that and then they would present that back to the large group. From there, at the end of that lesson, you would set them up for their next one, which is an asynchronous task, an offline task, and say, okay, you've worked with that partner. Now I'm going to assign you a new partner, or you can be in a group, or or whatever you want to do. And um, you guys are going to go get into working now on the actual cartoon. And then we were going to find them um, uh, public domain cartoons and have them um, work on creating an entire soundscape for that. So they would need to do the voices and the sound effects. They would then work with their partner, their group, and we were gonna give the option to let them work individually um, and do that for a few weeks and then bring that back for performance. So that's kind of where you would go with the final summative of that. And there's some additional details in Mia's lesson plan, which she shared for you. So that is kind of that whole unit. Now here's what we've decided, Mia and I, and we're watching our kids, um, we feel like, it's really important in um, the classroom for the kids not to get bored. And, and that's something that I, it's like a mantra of mine. Like it, I believe if you can't make learning fun, you shouldn't be teaching. And that the only way people really learn is through fun. And there's ways to make everything fun. That's a whole nother lecture 
video talking point thing. But in this one, what we've, we've been working on sound effects and voicing over with our students so long because it really is a slower pace. And so we are really contemplating where after they come back from this, the last asynchronous task, which is them revoicing, and we will have them partner up and share their stories and do those. We're not sure if we are going to continue past that or if we're going to switch our unit. Just because we have been working on it for three weeks, it'll be four weeks. And um, I would normally work on a unit till it's done and have no problem, but I am noticing that students are more easily fatigued and really need that. You know, we're so so bored, right, in all these lockdowns that they need that variety. And so we um, are really watching that and are not sure. So that's just a little a note for you and something to think about. But hopefully that gives you a game and a couple more lesson plans. Check out Mia's um, lesson plan. It's linked in the comments below and in the last video also. Okay, quarantine tip, day number 18. Um, I would say that you need to go out and sit and let the sun hit your face and close your eyes and just listen to the world around you. It was so good for me. I, I did it in a couple different spots today and just sat and listened. We're doing so much with our eyes right now on the screen that to really kind of hone back in your other senses really makes, I think, a, a lovely change and kind of reminds me that my eyes aren't the only thing, right? So anyway, I hope that helps. I look forward to talking to you guys tomorrow and have a great day.